Hey guys, seems to be a bit of confusion about soldering and soldering iron, so I thought I'd put together a little bit of a video to show you some of the stuff that you might encounter. What I use is uh, 6040 rosin core solder. Now this is 032 size. They make it in different sizes. If you can get the 015, uh, smaller diameter. I have some around here somewhere. I just don't know where it's at right now uh, It's better in, in the bigger diameter solder is for bigger projects This is great for soldering track um, but for things like these uh, surface mount LEDs uh, way too much uh, My assortment of irons that I have out here right now this is an old weller. This is a really nice little iron. It's temperature controlled. It heats up really fast. It's got a nice holder. The, the power supply is up on the shelf right now. But, uh, and you can see, it's had a lot of use, but it's a, still a perfectly serviceable iron. Okay, the tip is in good shape. And you should be able to see that tinned all the way around, even though the other part of it looks kind of crusty. Okay, this next iron uh, is a monster. This is like a 60 watt, something like that. It's a Weller. Um, I got this for doing stained glass projects, for soldering the leading in between the, the little pieces of glass. You probably wouldn't use this for model railroading unless you're doing garden scale brass or something like that then you might this might come in handy or if you were uh, sweat soldering a huge bunch of brass together but it's just way too much heat for what we're doing so okay my next iron this is an old Radio Shack unit there was some question about uh, iron clad tips and plated tips well this has a plated tip on it. Now it started out that this tip was a silvery white color. Uh, you might be able to see it down in there. Plated tips, they're going to be silver, like a nickel plating, or they'll have this white colored iron uh, plating on it. You don't want to use any kind of abrasive on your tips if they've got a, if you've got a plated tip. If it's a raw copper tip, it's okay. This iron's interesting because this, uh, most, most irons, they don't unscrew the elements, but this one has replaceable elements. This is a 33 watt element, but they made them in 45, 20, down to 15, and so you could have one handle, that's a nice cool grip handle, and, and have multiple irons and interchange the tips. The tip is tinned all the way around. Yeah, there's some blobs on it, but that's okay. Once we get it hot, we just clean it off again, and you're good to go. And the solder kind of protects it. But you notice that there's not a bunch of buildup of black goo, which is the rosin from the, the solder, which is the flux that's built into the solder. Uh, the next one that I have is a, a cheap 25 watt, again, Radio Shack iron. Um, it has replaceable tips. But the tips are not fancy. It, it screws in here to that part. Uh, but it is a plated tip. And again, it's, it's uh, you can see that it's tinned all the way around. Okay. This is a little gas powered iron. So it's, it f has a butane tank in here. It's burns o -matic. Um, You can control the heat. You have to pull it up, turn on the gas, and light it with a lighter, get it going, and then drop that down, and the element in here glows. And uh, it'll, it's probably the equivalent of a 30-watt iron, basically, but, I mean, you can turn the heat up and down, so you can do fine stuff with it. It's got a nice tip on it. And, again, clean, tinned all the way around when it's cold. Okay. This one has a nice little flip down stand, so when you're not using it, you can set it and you're not going to burn anything. Now this one is a little wobbly, so you want to be careful where you set it down, but another handy tool to have. I wouldn't recommend this for doing circuit board work, but if you're going to a show, taking your modules, 
your trains, you, if something breaks, you have one of these in your toolbox, you can fix it. This and a roll of solder. And another little thing is this desoldering braid. This is copper braid, it's impregnated with rosin. Basically you lay it on there and it wicks, you put the heat to it against your solder joint and it wicks the solder away. So my latest and greatest iron here, as you can see, is this computer controlled unit. Now right now I've got it set up for 680, that's the hottest it'll get. But I can turn the knob and turn it up or down. It's got this little cleaning sponge built in here which I've got a little bottle of squirt bottle of water to keep that thing from drying out too much and I don't really want it wet I want it damp and then every once in a while take your sponge out and uh, knock your little solder blobs off of there so this iron I've already used it once but it's got a, a really nice fine tip on it now you can see uh, it's really silver up here and it's a little dirty down here so what I'm going to do is just clean that off with my little sponge okay and then to tin it what I like to do is get my solder here okay I'm going to get wait till it goes back up to temperature and I'm going to put a blob a drop of solder and I build it up on there until it's a little droplet and then I roll my solder iron around and keep that solder moving until that stops smoking okay until all that rosin and, and stuff is gone and if it looks like it's uh, getting a little dried out We'll blob a little more on there. Okay, roll it over. I'm doing a bad job of getting it in the camera here. But roll it back and forth. Whoops, there it went off. Okay, and once it's stopped smoking, you can clean it off on your. Okay, now that's nice and silver all the way around. And we don't have to go. All the way up to the end we're only you're gonna only use this little bit out here so like the last quarter inch or so all right anyway once you have your your tip all tinned like this you're ready to solder and then before you put it away you clean it off again you're gonna clean it every time you make a joint clean it off over here come over make a joint come over clean it off let it come back up to temp now I have a brand new iron that I just bought um, because of my project soldering these little guys these uh, teeny tiny uh, surface mount LEDs uh, it didn't go so well so I needed a, a new iron now this is it's a 15 watt iron um, made by Antex and come I got it from engineering but there's no tip on it. Nothing. The tip that I got, these are slide on tips. Okay? Now, this is an unplated tip. Let's see if you can see that. And it's all copper looking. We're supposed to slide this little ring up to get it past the slits. Okay? And then we slide that on and then this little keeper ring snugs down on there to keep the tip on all right so, so I've never used this it's a brand new iron we've got to heat it up and tin it to start with and we're gonna let that heat up really well while that's heating up I want to point out that I bought special solder this is um, low temp it's Kester low temperature solder 62% tin 36% lead 2% silver uh, 020 diameter so this is a, a low temperature solder it's supposed to flow more easily than regular solder and made specifically for 
these tiny parts. You can see that the iron has changed color. It's getting hot. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I have my solder uh, flux paste here. There's a little container of flux paste. Once that gets good and hot, and I'll probably hold it here for another couple minutes, I'm going to tin this iron with this special solder. And I won't let, you know, this has an extremely fine needle point, and you, you can see it's getting very hot now. So what I do is I'll plunge this in here just quickly, all right, and then apply my solder all the way around and like I said you don't have to work all the way up rotate that around work it down get it out to the end here and then clean it off and be gentle with this little needle point because you don't want to bend that but there is a nicely tinned tip okay ready for some little LED soldering things that's tinning that iron for the first time and uh, if you're gonna be working on these things these little uh, rotary flasher modules I would definitely recommend getting his uh, magnet wire and there's this little aid right here this little thing will save you tons of frustration trying to hold a tiny microscopic dot of an LED while trying to hold a wire on it. So you put the LED here in this side, the unpadded side, the wire goes in this insulated side and then the whole thing goes in your little pan of ice or whatever and then you can magnify your heart out and get in there and just touch the thing um, now they recommend liquid paste liquid flux I, I'm sorry instead of the paste flux I just use the paste flux it takes but a dot of this to help your solder flow and because the pads on the LEDs are gold plated all you have to do is pre-tin the wire get the wire in position touch your iron to it and you've got a solder joint that's all there is to it it a lot of its a lot of the soldering stuff is uh, how much prep you do to get it ready um, if you've got your stuff fluxed your uh, pads all wetted or uh, tinned you don't really have to apply much heat or for very long to get the joint to to make a good connection that is the basics of and getting a re iron ready to go um, once I'm ready to solder up some LEDs and I've had a couple practice sessions I'll uh, take some video of that and show you how that works <laughs>